What's popping off, y'all? It's the Dr. Yeah. Green Thumb Podcast. We're live right here. You know, usually we're filming shit, but today we're live. Live. Oh, oh me. In Friday the world. Live. Uh-oh. And, you know, we got a special guest with us, my homie Matt Barnes Appreciate up in you. here. No stranger. No stranger uh, to Be Real TV. Not shy to smoke. <laughs> no, not shy to smoking. Uh, we got all. E-Zone and um, C-Minus. And, yes, I got to, you know... Definitely co-sign that statement. Uh, you know, there was a, there was a session he, that we had here, and it was a, a flavor tasting session here that we had. Yes. And uh, Matt came over this day and was chilling with us. And Pedro made sure to keep rolling joints the whole time. I don't know if he was tested, you know. I don't know if he was tested, Mister Barnes here. Like you know, can he can he can he hang with us? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was that or he was just just rolling all because we had a bunch of jars, so he just kept rolling Bro. a bunch from every fucking it was a good jar. Day. I was high as giraffe pussy. It was, it was, <laughs> yeah. it was a nice session. It was funny because I remember when I when I first spoke with Snoop, it was a similar situation where we just blew, 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 and he's like, "Damn, nephew, like you could really smoke." You know what I mean? So I've been someone who's been. Smoking since I was fourteen, you know. Now, now that I'm done playing, I'm I'm, I'm an advocate for it, and I and I fight for it. Uh, you know, press the NBA about the the, the drug policy issues. Uh, you know that they have they have going on because I really feel, man, this plant can really help save the world. Yeah, I mean, you know, I have to agree with that and co-sign that every time. Mm-hmm. You know, but that's 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 what I love is that you know you know pe- people think that you know athletes and other people that come in. Um, that it might be new to them. They don't know <laughs> that that particular person's history right. with you know cannabis or, or yeah. weed, whatever you want to call it. Right? Mm-hmm. They don't know their their relationship with it. And when you came and told it to us on the smoke box, <coughs> I mean, it totally made sense to us. You know, because a lot of motherfuckers that I I had met throughout, you know, doing, you know, this as a musician. Oh man, so and so smokes. Oh yeah, the lead, a lot of the league smokes, and then you you just never know it unless you smoke with motherfucker. Right, they got right? big lungs. Yeah, yeah. and <laughs> and so Dang. somebody outside might be like, oh man, they they probably don't smoke like that. And let me yeah. tell you, man, any motherfucker from the NBA that I smoked mm-hmm. with. <laughs> they were like power smokers. You know, we get it in, man, because yeah. it, it, it does so much for for us. You know, obviously, you know, it relaxes and helps sleep, but takes away pain. It allows you to focus. It does so many things because people just think going out and playing basketball alone is easy, but the mental part, you got to be able to calm your mind and oh, be able yeah. to be focused, especially with all the crazy shit going on in this world. So, you know, at 14, I found this was my secret sauce. You know what I mean? I wasn't a pill. I wasn't someone who could take pills. They always yeah. made my stomach hurt. I'm a social drinker. But I'm a burn. I'm a burner. You know what yeah. I mean. So whenever I get a chance to, it's it, it's on the agenda. And you said you played throughout all mm-hmm. your athletic career since I, I mean, was did a you f- smoke freshman in high school. Yeah, you know what I mean. I was taking gravity bonds in high school. Holy shit! Damn up. gravity yeah. bonds. <laughs> <laughs> the old Alhambra bottle gravity bonds. Like you remember the old yeah. Alhambra bottles, the big ones. I remember one time I fucked up though. The first my senior year, I took one before we played, and I shouldn't have did it. Like we cut school, uh, we cut fourth period, and we had this big old tournament. And I took a gravity bong. When I tell you, I was out of my fucking mind. I could, I had like two points that game. Probably air, I think I airballed two layups, and then came back the next night and scored fifty seven. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was, I was just too high that night. So it's just kind of finding your balance in your median, and I, I was able to do that. Absolutely, because I've been there. I've had my face chopped off mm. by my own bong. For sure. You think the cardio has a lot to do with it? I I, I say I said big lungs, um, in a sense where you know, um, if you keep cardio and a lot of the athletes that have come out here that mm-hmm. do smoke, uh, it's it's a sport they play that has a lot of cardio. And yes. Obviously, basketball is one of those. Things. I I personally think that cardio has a lot to do with oh, yeah. being able to keep up because your body's so used to. Yeah. Like breathing in and breathing out, just so. That's the key, man. I I got two kind of cardio things, but that's what I always prided myself when I was in the NBA. Though I I wasn't a star, obviously I was a role player, but I played my role. But I was always the most in shape person because I'd kill myself during the summertime getting in shape because I knew I was smoking on top of it, you know. But I remember maybe uh, fourteen, maybe two years before I retired, three years before I retired, I started fucking with Wiz, and I'd been on Swishers for like twenty years, Mm. twenty years straight Swishers. I can't, I can't even smell them now. 
Um, but Wiz is like, no, you need to get on these papers. I'm like, nah, ain't nothing like smoking a blunt. And he was trying to get me and Snoop both to get on papers. Yeah. So Snoop went from Swishers to Backwoods, and I went from Swishers <laughs> oh, to Papers. That's right. almost Crazy, worse. Right? That's uh, almost yeah. worse. So I went, I went from uh, from Swishers to Papers. But then, like I said, I was obviously smoking when I was playing, and I didn't realize how heavy those Swisher papers were on my lungs, just Till, sitting on yeah. top of my lungs until I was consistently smoking papers in the league, and it was just like, God damn, I don't feel nothing no more. It's crazy. So I haven't been, I haven't been, I haven't touched. I mean, I. I probably hit maybe two backwoods in, in, in my life, but outside of that, I haven't touched a Swisher in shit six years now. Yeah, man. I you know because I used to do a lot of blunts back in the early '90s. I was smoking shit loads of blunts oh, yeah. Di- in different wraps. You right. know what I mean? Not the backwoods. I never Ooh. fucked with those. But backwoods are heavy. Um, yep. I immediately felt it when I switched back to papers. Oh yeah. And uh, I you know Wiz did a favor. To you oh, by, well, there's by, no by question. Helping you switch no up. Question. I try to switch people up all the time. Yep. You know what I mean? Because realistically, we ain't supposed to be no. inhaling tobacco no, all the time. I'm trying to yeah. get Stephen Jackson to cross over. He, yeah. I sent him a whole because I'm sponsored by Ross. So I sent him a whole bunch of Ross, and he was with it, and then he fell off. So I, I always try to preach paper on people. Yeah, you people. got you got to man. It uh, you know it's just some people are, are you know that's it's that's their go to. They fuck with that. They don't mind some papers. It's the fix, though. I think it's yeah. that little nicotine yeah. fix they need. You know what I mean? So I was able to shake that shit. I used to be just... he- heavy on the blunts before, and then uh, it turned into more of an occasional thing. Right. Where, like, like this one, it's like, a, you know, uh, Pedro hooked it up with this. He's like, yo, I got you one of these. And these things are fucking... I was like, how do you not want to smoke a specialty joint yeah. where it looks like it's been weaved and all? It's like, I'll do something like that, but I, I do get when, like... When it weighs in on you, like yeah. there'd be times where like I'd, I'd get morning workout routine, you get up and you're getting ready to do cardio and there'd be times where I would smoke like a half a backwood or a fucking blunt and like, oh man, the then first we, fucking 20 minutes into running, then you feel that. Uh, hey, well, yeah. well think and about then, it like this. Most, you know, cannabis shops that are licensed or all of them, they don't sell any product that's pre-rolled with with uh Yeah, I think this is blunt. CBD. Yeah, it's a CBD yeah. wrap. Well, and well, you too, remember? I mean, if you all, if everyone smoked lunch, you remember the morning loogies were nasty. Oh too, my right? god! You don't even, you don't even get that with these. Oof. You know what I mean? The morning loogies <clears throat> after a hard night, a, a hard session, them shit's horrible. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Doesn't it make yeah, you want to call your doctor and shit? Like, sometimes yeah, you're like, oh, what the fuck is that? Yeah, what is going on in here? You guys would sweat it out though. Like, well, yeah. not only in practice, but you guys would steam. steam but yeah, it you. Out, I mean, like I said, for me to smoke throughout my so for 15 years, I smoked and I got caught twice. And then I turned myself in. I was only you're, you're only allowed to turn yourself in once if you know you're going to fail. But I turned myself in twice, and they gave me a pass because I was a friend of the program. Right on. Um, but I, it was a full time job. You know what I mean. So I was always eating clean, drinking a shitload of water, always doing cardio, and then always in the steam room. So it was like a full time job outside of basketball to be able to smoke and play. But to me, there was no other option. You know what I mean. Right. I was someone who didn't sit out for nothing unless I was suspended. You know, <laughs> unless I was yeah. suspended it was the only time. So I played through broken fingers, badly sprained ankles, whatever the nagging thing was I played through because I smoked but I couldn't take the, the pills they would try to give me on top of that that shit just hurt my stomach man so I tried pills and it just wasn't for me but the, the tree always treated me right so you know I try to treat it right, they, right back. you know the trees always treat us right mm-hmm. man. hey let me let me ask you this because I know this is like a subject going on there's a lot of subjects going on obviously but you know one that you know relates to to the players right now um the 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 debate whether they should start the season or postpone right. till next year. What do you yeah. what do you think they're going to do, and where do you, where do you stand? Um, I I think the the fan in me would like to see them play. Obviously, with the the uh, you know the nature of 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 the country right now, it it's a lot of crazy shit going on, and I'm not one naive to think that. You know, guys dribbling a basketball, shooting a basketball, and a hoop is going to change yeah. anything. It's not. Yeah. But to me, that where, where the players have a chance to change things is these owners. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> a, more, a majority of these owners across the board in sports haven't really said shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we hear their silence loud and clear. So I think you know, from a standpoint of a player being now is when you go. Um, as the NBA, because the NBA is 75% African American, you go and you make you put some demands on these owners. We have a list of demands that we need you to meet. And if you don't meet these, then we sit out. So I spoke out the other day on Kyrie Irving, and I may have been too harsh off the rip, but I was high. And I thought I was talking to Stephen Jackson (laughs) on live. I was talking to Stephen Jackson like I was just talking to him, but I forgot it was on live, so the world heard it. You know what I mean? But I don't – I respect everybody's opinion. You know, Kyrie, when he first came out, he was just like, let's sit out. 
And I'm like, okay, but like, what's the plan? You know, you yeah. have to have a plan if you're going to sit out. And I feel not only in basketball, but the world now, you know, black and brown people, we have to have a plan now for the first time in 400 years, they're listening to us. <laughs> Absolutely. So what is going to be our plan moving forward in, in, in life and in sports? You know, so I really feel like this is a, we have to seize the opportunity is as the NBA and, and really go out there and, and try to make a change for our community. So these, these demands are going to be based on community, uh, upon more diversity and management, just things that really give back, you know, yeah. instead of, you know, because I feel like sports does just enough to kind of check that box that we care, but right. as soon as, you know, the next week, you don't hear back from them, you know what I mean? So to really make an significant pack, uh, impact in these uh, in these cities that these teams play in and that these owners are making so much money off of, you really got to start kicking in, you know what I mean? Because like I said, a lot of us come from that. A lot of us come from poverty and, and food stamps and drugs and abuse and these are the same people that are getting killed day by day. So we were the lucky ones to make it out, but we don't forget where we come from. You know what I mean? Right. So we need these the, the NBA, the owners, and everyone to start kicking in and really start trying to help uh, bring more awareness and help take care of these neighborhoods. Yeah, it's like they're doing the minimum. Now, always, yeah. yeah. It's always just to check the box. Like, okay, we Black Lives, <laughs> Black Lives right. Matter today, but we're not going to talk about it the rest of the year. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, we really need you to make an impact. You know, some of these owners, you know, start a $100 million fund where you're, you know, uh, quarterly or, or monthly donating to these inner city causes that, you know, that with the communities that are giving their last dollar to come watch your team play and you're making millions upon billions, uh, you know, over a length of time on, really start giving back to these communities because it's important. Yeah. The, I, I, you know, it's, it, you see both sides in Absolutely. terms of like the players that, that want to sit and the ones that feel like they should mm -hmm. carry on because mm -hmm. like if you're, if you're making the money and you could, you could put that money towards some of these programs even when these guys making promises you know they take their time to maybe do it the mm -hmm. players can actually you know be active in making the programs happen absolutely through through that you know through what they make right yeah. right I you respect know, all moves, though, as long as yeah. it has a plan. If you have to have a – to me, you just have to have a plan. You know, I kind of look at the NBA as kind of like the leader because if you think about it, if we go back four months, like when did the world take coronavirus seriously? It's right. when the NBA stopped playing. Very you know late. I mean? Oh, shit, they, the, the NBA canceled or, you know, postponed the season. People are like, oh, this virus is serious. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now that they're thinking about coming back, the NBA has kind of always been at the forefront of, of social issues uh, in this country. We've, you know – We've been branded, all the, obviously, as individuals, but as a team. But if you look at football, those guys, although they feel the same way and they're superstars over there, their platforms aren't as big when it comes to talking about issues. Major League Baseball can't even talk. They, you know yeah, what I mean? They, their they, whole shit is just like, yeah. I, I wish you motherfucking would say something. You know what I mean? Especially to, a, especially to a black baseball player. So I really feel like this is a perfect opportunity for the NBA to kind of take charge, take lead, and make change in the communities, which, which will ultimately change sports, which will ultimately change this country. Yeah. Do you think it's come? You think they're going to bring it back? I I think so. Like I said, I've been fortunate enough to talk to some of the guys that are from from the player standpoint that are you know putting together you know the situation that they're going to present um, to the owners, and uh, you know I'm hopeful. Weren't they? Um, I'm hopeful. It, weren't they supposed to get down to Disneyland or something like that? Uh, Orlando. 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 Yeah, <laughs> like some bubble. Well, yeah, it's, 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 it's in Disney World. Disney World. Oh, so is it Epcot? Is that what they're, is that what they're gonna play? Well, I'm not sure. I never, I never been there, but it's it's a big old. It's where they have <clears throat> all kinds of sports already. So they already have gyms and football fields and arenas and that kind of shit oh, out damn. there because it's it sports is played there. Yeah. But it, they call it a bubble. It's not an actual bubble. I just they're in just an area. Yeah, it's you like know, a bubble a arena. A Disney, yeah. air, a Disney area is designated yeah. to them that, that I guess they can't that, leave. Or, that's considered a bubble, right? Yeah, there. yeah. You know that. That's that's going to be a trip, you know, because everybody's going to have to restart with no momentum, like whatever. I mean, it, you know, the records are what they are, right. you know, when they left, right. which were the Bucks and Lakers uh -huh. top of the, you know, their uh, both their conferences and whatnot. But man, you know, to have to like get that chemistry off the rip that fast and then go into to a playoff situation. And yeah, getting your body right. People don't understand, like, we don't, we can't just hop back on the court and be what we were when we stopped. You know yeah. what I mean? Like That's why been, they're asking for that insurance, right? Yeah, it's been, yeah, definitely. It's been four months, but, you know, we have to get our engines back started. You know what I mean? And so it's going to take time to, I'm glad they're doing, I guess they're doing a training camp at their home facility and then doing training camp once they get to Orlando. Uh, playing some scrimmage, I guess some exhibition games against each other, but then they only have eight games to be ready for the playoffs, you know, after four months off. So I'm hoping that, you know, everyone stays injury free and, uh, you know, they're able to pull this off because, like I said, I don't think it's going to change 
uh, the world of what's going on, but I think every second that the cameras are on these players, I know they're going to be pushing the message and pushing the movement, and, and I think basketball can bring a little enjoyment to people because it's been so bad that 2020 oh, yeah. has been a fucking disaster horrible you know what yeah. i mean horrible it's been a horrible you know we're half we're barely halfway through it still it's ever since uh you know ever, ever since kobe passed away it's been like a domino effect of not just bad shit but horrible shit yeah. you know we lose kobe and his daughter and and, and, the, and the people on the helicopter and then the pandemic hits and then people are dying left and right and now this whole race social injustice so like we haven't got a chance to kind of exhale in 2020 yet you know what i mean so i think from that standpoint basketball can bring a little bit of enjoyment for a little bit of time and then also obviously get back to the issues but but you know i think some players think obviously and they've said that playing basketball is going to take away from the the focus on these issues and i don't think so because basketball is you know played at night although it'll be ran on on the air like these players are going to take it upon themselves to make sure that these issues are continuing to be addressed and continuing to be talked about. And LeBron is the biggest star in the world, but his voice is powerful when it more powerful when it's coming from the NBA, yeah. you know what I mean? So the NBA as a unit continue to talk about it and, and bring raise awareness on it and really kick, you know, these owners put some money towards the cause. So I hope it does. Like I said, I respect everyone's decision, but to me, you just have to have a plan if you're not going to do something. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, because this it, it's a platform that they could use, you know, to to. There's no bigger platform. The, yeah, to no put the message platform. out. Absolutely. With some of the biggest stars in LeBron, you know, as you say, being the biggest one mm -hmm. out there, and he's leading the charge. He's ready to yep. lead it. Absolutely. No, these guys. I mean, guys are serious now. You know, I, I heard LeBron is working on some uh, some voter suppression type stuff because you know they try anything they can to you know stop our movement, stop and, and I just want people to like. Our people to understand because you know I'm, I'm Italian and black, but if you have any black in you, you're black. So I look at myself as a black man, but I just think black and brown people, if we come together and realize and, and learn these the, 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 the politics and, and and not all at once in slow pieces, vote for stuff you're passionate about. But if we if we come together as one and realize how poor, powerful our voice is, if we actually vote, it's going to change the world. Oh yeah, it's going to change the world. You know, so I'm working on stuff personally right now. I'm working. I, I got this. This politic guru who's kind of been giving me a crash course, but just we're working on a project. We're working on a uh, a project to make learning politics and voting fun, like quick, fast ways to learn it with animation, uh, 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 small content cuts, you know, bold st uh, stats and figures. And tell people to kind of take bite-sized pieces out of politics. That's cool. You know, yeah. It's hard. Understand how it affects yeah. them. Yeah, but, man. but people understand, like, when we're talking about vote, let's get Donald Trump out, that's great. But we also have to understand we're voting on our local and, and, and state levels. You yes. know what I mean? To get our streets cleaned up. You know, we vote for the DA. We vote for the sheriff. We yeah. vote for the mayor. Like, we have a lot of control. But it was People bypass that. But people, it was never meant for us. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the people that, you know... The, the bad, nasty people in politics count on us not voting because it was never meant for us to, you know, do, you know. So we've always been trying to just survive. So now we have to kind of get out of that mode and be like, OK, like my voice is heard. And I don't I may not know everything, but I may know that I want potholes cleaned up in my city and I know I can vote for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So by that time, then you're getting registered and then you, you kind of want to start learning more because you see the potholes get fixed. You're like, oh, shit, like my voice matters. So we're, we're trying to teach people slowly but surely. <laughs> take bit by bit to learn and understand how to vote. Yeah. And I think that's important in your state more than anything. Absolutely. Because like you said, a lot of shit gets passed and mm -hmm. the, the people in that state don't know about some of the shit being passed. A lot and, of it. And they have, they have all the power to change yep. those things and, yep. and have a say. Yeah. But those are the, those votes are the ones that actually count. There's no, absolutely. You know, more more than, you know, voting for any other fucking thing, realistically, where you live, mm -hmm. all that shit matters. Yeah, like the you most. Know. So, so the people running for the little offices and, and then the legislation that passes and mm -hmm. all that stuff that happens in that's your state. on your state and local level. That's where you start. Everything else can come after, but that's mm -hmm. where you start because yep. realistically, that's, that's, it, it, it affects you. Yeah. Yes. It, and and I think that's directly. The, the, that's the disconnect in politics is that people feel that you know what fuck politics. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect me. And both sides are fucked up. But you got to know then in the little ways that you don't see it does. Oh man, your like, voice is heard. Like those those things that are happening yeah. in your city and your state yeah. and all that shit. Yeah. Like 
who's going to be the next mayor, who's going to be the next fucking um, district city attorney. Council. People got to realize like the district attorneys are the ones that decide whether, you know, they're going to prosecute these cops that are killing people. You know, and I know for a situation up in Sacramento, um, when I did um, Stephon Clark's killing, when the cops shot him six times in the back, we then went up there, did a rally, did everything, helped with the, helped the family do some shit. And, and, you know, it's leading up to whether the DA was going to charge these cops. She gets a $400,000 donation from, you know, the police. Mm. And then all of a sudden, the cops aren't charged. You know what I mean? So it's just a dirty, cold game. But we have the power to decide who gets that seat. You know what I mean? But right. like I said, for so long, they just depend on us not, they, they count on us not to vote. So they can arrange whoever the fuck they want to sit in these seats and, and keep it in the family. You know what I mean? All that shit is, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. There's not too many disruptors in there from now. Like, we need disruptors in there now and people that are going to call people on racism, call people on bullshit. Yeah. But we have that we have that power if we start to vote. Yeah. True. And and put put people, put different people in there. Yeah. And stop allowing a motherfucker to like win by default. Mm, right. Because we didn't vote. Because somebody didn't vote. Mm-hmm. Once we get all that shit made, I'm going to pass it to you. I want to pass it to all my friends that have a platform. We just got, like I said, it's small pieces to teach. You know, I'm learning. You know, every it, it's and we, we want to make it easy as like teenagers can learn it. Like my boys are about to be 12. It's going to be enough, uh, simple enough for them to learn it to to our grandparents, you know what I mean? And just understanding how important it is and and the power we have if we come together. We've always, we've never been together, (coughs) you know? We've never been together, and I think more than ever now, we have to come together. It's got to be everybody versus racism. It doesn't have to be just black and brown. Like, it's just got to be everybody versus hate. We got to get hate out of here. You know, hate is always going to be around, but we got to start calling people on it. We got to get people that are hateful out of powerful positions because they're all throughout politics and teaching and doctors and police officers. It's corrupt. You know what I mean? So we got to start using our power in voting and calling people on the bullshit. Yeah, there's too many people on both sides that carry that same old bullshit, and it, 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 and, and it's systemic because the, you know they make the next motherfucker down the line feel like they have to carry this fucking particular torch. Yep, and that's why it stays the same. It's all about what you teaching motherfuckers that are coming behind you. It's taught, you and know? then most of the time people hire people who look like them. You know what I mean? So that's why they keep that shit. You know, I'm not going to hire a brown person. I'm not going to hire a black person, an Asian person. Like, they don't look like anybody in this room. P- on average, people hire who p- people who look like them. So we got to break that chain. But the only way we can start doing that, man, is voting and, and understanding active, yeah. what to vote on. So Got to get active. Absolutely. Got to get motherfucking active. Mm-hmm. Speaking of activity, I mean, you know, the post- podcast with, with you and Steven, that shit's been getting real active, especially... Yeah. You know, with with everything because of you know his relationship to to George Floyd. Absolutely, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Um, man, it, it must have you know started a whirlwind for your platform over there. Yeah, it's it's been crazy. You know, I've I've been in the social justice space for a handful of years. I've always been very outspoken. Um, and then Jack has always been a. If you knew Jack, he's always just been a real down to earth real person one of the realest people i know but he jumped into this role and you know he's like you know i didn't ask for it it was it was put on my doorstep and he's been amazing you know yeah. what i mean he, if you think about it like he, yeah, he is stepped, the, he stepped the fuck he's up the face sure. he's the face of this movement where he has the whole country behind the loss of his brother the whole country protesting in 18 other the whole you know, 18 other countries, uh, along with, you know, everybody in the United States protesting. So we, we've never had this kind of shit before. And I tell him every day, man, I just talked to him right before I pulled up in here on this podcast, man. He just got done doing a march in Philly, you know, you know, just checking his temperature, his vibe, you know, telling him how proud I am of him and keep it going and, and take time for yourself, man. Don't get yourself lost in this. You know what I mean? You got to be able to take care of yourself, yeah. smoke, chill out. Because this shit, is, it's draining, man. You know, we're looking on Instagram, you know, daily, and that shit is disheartening. There's just so much negativity. And even though these motherfucking cops that are on camera, they continue to kill people right in front of us. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. just, anytime you turn, it's like turning on the news. You know what I mean? So it's just like... Yeah, I mean, we were talking about that the other day. Is that, you know, the news now has to actually fucking report this this bullshit that's been happening... Because people on Instagram can easily be like, why the fuck y'all ain't right. putting this on the news right, right. now? Yep. You know, and, and that's what's happening. So it's exposing the shit yeah. on a, uh, on a Another higher level, level. Another yeah, level. that yeah. none of us probably expect. It. No. I guess that's that's part of the balance of, of the loss of privacy through the mm-hmm. smartphone. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? Because a lot of us, you know, as, as maybe celebrities and, and, and you know, 
people in, in the entertainment biz, whether you're an athlete or you're a musician or an artist or whatever, you know, some of us would often be like seeing someone from across the room be like this while you're fucking having dinner with your family and be like, it's a cold game. That's some bullshit it's right a cold there. Game. But, you know, the balance is, you now know, you could, you could catch the fuck shit, yeah. Yeah. you know, and hold these fuckers accountable but now. Anybody you know? can be a reporter now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Any of us can catch something or, you know, most of these people now are catching it and they're breaking news for the news. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. it's holding the news accountable. But you, like I said, <clears throat> Instagram is like the news because it, it's everyday people who are catching the, the injustice and the killings and the bullshit and then beating people up like we're, they're catching it. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's just like we have to continue to call it out. We have to continue to to, to make it everybody verse that because the world is crazy and and, and and there's good and bad. But we there there's no place for hate. You know no. what I mean. It's just that this country was built on hate, and after four hundred some years, man, it's time for that shit to change. If things are trending on Twitter, that's and it's not on the news. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's that's pretty much the way. You, 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 right. Yeah, like if it's if it's going viral on Twitter and everywhere else, and the news ain't on it, that's how you know it's being censored. <laughs> yeah, usually, like you know, like when when something major happens and the news is not sh any of the news uh, sites are not showing it, you go to a hashtag of that city oh. on Twitter and you oh, find the realest right shit that you are oh, gonna yeah. ever see. Oh. Uncensored and direct to you. You yeah. want to know why? Because people in that neighborhood have smartphones. Yep. And once they come out the house and they see what's going on in their neighborhood, they're the first to get it before the news can get there. I mean, <laughs> right. the news is listening to the police uh, and, and, and fire department scanners to go to the spot. Mm -hmm. Whereas the people that live in the spot, they got their phones ready, right? Citizens app. Citizens yeah, app. Citizen app. <laughs> Yo, man. that shit like. Yeah. They're beating the have, fucking news to the news. Have you ever man. have you ever been on that, man? Uh, Yo, that shit's crazy, right? So, yeah. so it's everybody that like you live around and lets you know, like, like what's going on in the somebody neighborhood. Somebody could get alerted, like let's say donut shop down the street. Somebody be like, man stabbed at DK Donuts or whatever. Yeah, and it's and the, and you get an alert and you're just like, oh it's shit, a, it's an app. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's what's it called? Citizens. Citizens. Citizen. And right, people we'll could just like, out. like somebody over there could have Citizens app and just turn it on and be like, I'm going to go live. Look, this guy bleed out or whatever. You know? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, whatever, whatever video footage that's available, they'll put up there. Like, so if it's somebody's, you know, ring fucking camera, you know, something happened outside of the, on their block and mm -hmm. their ring camera picked it up. Mm -hmm. They'll fucking oh, pop that there. off. They'll wow. fucking pop like actual footage off. Like if they were you right there. You can do there. it on ring. Is yeah. it just? Damn, is tight. it just your neighborhood, or you could look at everywhere? It's it's a bunch of different. Well, yeah, it, it's the map. It, it, okay. Some 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 places are not registered though. Like it's well, crazy. Yeah. Like when you go into the IE, like it's like, for, it's like yeah, they're it's not like, covered. Nah. <laughs> yeah, they're like fuck that. Everything's on well, bad. <laughs> because it's probably within your the range of like so many miles from where you're. I think at. it's just like a big city zip code. Big, yeah. Yeah. yeah, zip code. It's a big city thing because like places in. Chicago, like big cities have it. New York, yeah. uh, Vegas has it. Yeah, like Bakersfield it doesn't have yeah, it. Yeah, they at don't. All. Yes, yes, what I'm saying. Well, Bakersfield, like, Bakersfield is the armpit of America. That's why. <laughs> 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 Sorry, C minus. <laughs> ah, is that where you're from? Uh, oh, shit, I'm from Sacramento. That's not too much better. Oh, yeah, Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that's the state of Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that's the state capital, man. No, I love Sac. You know what I mean? I, I, I've had I've had some ups and downs out there, man. You oh, know, I faced sure. a lot of racism in Sacramento. You know what I yeah. mean? But then I was just a part of a of a rally that my brother Dion Taylor who's a filmmaker uh, put on the other day and there was 50, 53,000 and it really touched my heart because I faced a lot of racism growing up out there um, and to see that many like I said just a, a rainbow of different faces and cultures and colors and beliefs and it was beautiful but when I was in high school there was a dude fucking with my, my, my sister. I was a, a senior. She was a sophomore. So this is 1998. This is like three months before I'm about to come down to UCLA. So this dude is fucking with her and calling her She's told on, she's told on him and nothing has happened and just this one day he called her and spit in her hair mm. and so she comes to me and I'm at fourth period so it's my last class I'm about to go home for the day and she's crying with her little with her little friends and she's holding her hair out and there's like a string of spit coming down I'm just like what the fuck and this kid just happens to walk by so I beat the dog shit out of this dude beat the shit out of him all into these bushes and everything so we end up going into the office and um. The principal didn't believe, like, like there's spit in her hair, and he was calling her, well, you know, his dad's a big-time lawyer in this city, and he's not, he wasn't raised that way, so they basically didn't believe me. So, like I said, I'm, not, I'm the best football player, basketball player, I'm, all, I'm about to go to UCLA, like, I'm putting my school on the map, and I'm just like, 
You think I'm lying about this, or you think I'm just going to beat this kid up? I'm about to go to college. So anyway, I'm suspended for like a week, couldn't play basketball. Like midway through my suspension, um, the KKK came to my school and burned down like a, a, a bathroom, hung a mannequin with uh, my football jersey on it, died had swastikas everywhere, broke windows, like just vandalized my high school. Hmm. Like you could, look, you could look it up, the NAACP came down there and everything. It was a big deal. And um, it just, from that day on, like I said earlier, I'm Italian and black. But when that day happened, I realized that the world looked at me as a black man. Like I, I'm yeah. proud to be, I'm a proud of my Italian side, I'm a proud of my black side. But I realized at 18 years old that... The world looks at me as a black man, you know, so I have to to, to care of myself and, and move accordingly. So yeah. to, to, to circle back, like the fact that Sacramento had all these people, over 50,000 people out there, it was, a, it was a beautiful thing to see because, like I said, just hate. That, that That's my main, like, hate. We got to get hate out of here, gotta man. Got to get hate out of here. There's no room for it. I agree. That shit is old news. Right. Just old live, news. man. Be happy. Yeah. Life is short anyway. Like, what the fuck? Hate is a is a heavy burden to carry. You know I mean, I don't yeah. hate nobody. I've, I've been done wrong, but I don't hate nobody because it's just it's a lot to carry. It, it drains you. It yeah, gives exactly. too much. It, yeah, it right. gives yeah. too much energy. Right. To to hate right. someone. Right. It's like you getting could, pissed off. You could dislike motherfuckers. You know. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like you know, we I've I've been done wrong, but I don't you know I don't hate nobody because it's just it's too much of my energy that 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 it's taken to that. Yeah. Yeah, man. Fuck the hate. Yeah, man. Word up. Hey, let me let me ask you this. I mean, the last dance yeah, was so. was big talk, especially Ooh. because you know we were all quarantined and they you know right. hit us with the fucking last dance. Legendary shit. I mean, I you know I thought it was a fucking dope. You know um, the way they told the story of homie. Some some people were like, hey man, they left this out or they left like all stories. Mm -hmm. But what did you think of it? I loved it. Um, because Michael Jordan has been the one superstar we never got to really see that side of. Like we got to see yeah. the player, and we got we knew him for selling shoes, and he was the owner. But obviously, some social media wasn't around back then, and he's never really been a superstar that's out in front talking. You know yeah. what I mean? So it was, there was always such a mystery about Mike. So I kind of looked at it as like it was like. So, like, we had Instagram. Like, I looked at it like, yo, this is, like, really behind the scenes. Because this is the shit we do now. Like, this, is. Is shit, this is shit LeBron does. LeBron will take people in the locker room, show them the locker room, the teammates, the team playing. Like, so we got to see that side of Mike. So, from that standpoint, I love that shit. Yeah, that and shit that was kind of cool. Was super dope. How he was giving it to, what's his name, uh, Campbell. Scott, was it Scott Campbell, Steve Campbell, something? He was a teammate. Oh, Scott, uh, 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 uh. I know you're talking about uh, he was, Scotty Scott Burrell. Scotty yeah, Scott Burrell. Burrell there you yeah. go, Scotty Burrell. He used to fuck with him. But I he mean, was, you gotta people have to understand. Like when someone fucks with you a lot like that, that means they like you. you yeah, know what I mean, it's, it's just that way of respect. And Mike was the OG, and this is a young dude, so there was an understanding there. But I just loved it. it I think it was beautiful. Obviously, you know, you could say whatever you want. True story, not. I mean, it was Mike's story. Right. You know what I mean, so Mike is allowed to tell the story however the fuck Mike remembers it. So, you know, I thought it was dope. Um, they got a lot of participation from other people, which I thought was amazing. I, I loved how Phil Jackson played. But think about this, man. If if Jerry, was it Krause, the, the yeah. little, little fat, short dude? Yeah. If he didn't get little man syndrome and, and, and fire Phil Jackson, does Phil Jackson, who, who do the Lakers win? They got Shaq and Kobe, but Phil got Shaq and Kobe on the same page. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, what if that, I like, totally I, that. I, I think, like, the big picture, like, yo, what if that little dude was was just let this team ride out to the sunset, maybe they won another championship or two, like, Phil just retires. Then he never comes and fix, you know, yeah. Shaq and Kobe. Yeah, he doesn't come fix the Lakers. Because Sha Phil Cause, was instrumental in that. You yes, know what I mean? No, they were both two um, absolutely amazing players, and they just clashed. You yeah. know what I mean? So, Phil, I got a chance to play for Phil his last year, and the mental the, the mental approach about Phil was, is beautiful. You yeah. know what I mean? Like he trusts his players. He knows how to press. He knows how to press a button in everyone in this room yeah. to get them to. You know, he knows he can't go at everyone the same way. Like he does yeah. what he has to do to motivate people. So, 
I know how integral he was when you see like Dennis Rodman fucking leaving to go to Vegas during the finals and Phil's not tripping because Phil yeah. knows like I got to let that dude blow off his steam and he's going to come and rebound his motherfucking <laughs> ass off next game. But it takes a special mind. Yeah, because everybody else, that. everybody else would have been on him. They would maybe oh, find, so him, him, find him, find him, not play him. And Phil didn't give a and fuck. He, Phil's he, like, I know that when he comes back, he's going to give me all he has. So like yeah. I said, that's the, the genius of Phil because it's, yeah, he went with the flow. Right. You know, and it's a beautiful thing. You know, like I said, I was honored to get a chance to play uh for phil um it's it's his last year what what book did he give you to read did he give you a book uh he did i don't even remember it and i didn't read it to be honest with you I, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> so feels like feels last year so feels last year um so they had won two in a row and i had came and got steve blake and someone else came so <clears throat> so we were thinking like so the lakers have won two in a row so we come in the three-peat season like trying to three-peat yeah and, it was uh, uh it was uh carl malone and and uh, no it wasn't that season was it no this is 2011 i want to say 2011 or 2010 2011 season so phil's last season so oh, there so oh, the okay, team was so, going, it was gasol. so it's yeah. lo gasol bynum cove uh fisher, fisher me steve blake shannon brown like we were yeah. deep lamar odom yeah. Like we were nice. Deep. We were nice. Yeah, I was there. I yeah, saw we it. were nice, man. And then uh, <laughs> I tear my knee in March and never really come back around. I tore my meniscus. And then when we kind of just kind of fizzled out, it was, it was tough. Like I yeah. said, it was Phil's last year. They were the team as, as a whole was going for three in a row. And that's year we got swept um, in the playoffs by Dallas and Dallas beat Miami in the finals. Um, so that was his last year. But anyway, back to the to the last uh, dance off. You know what? Also, I thought was super dope was to see the way Mike went at other players. Yeah. Is the same way Kobe did. His motivation, same right? Same way. You Kobe would shit. cuss. Kobe would cuss <laughs> a motherfucker out. You'd always see him elbowing <laughs> Sasha. You, it's all over. You know what I mean? He, like Kobe will get in your ass and, and challenge you because if you can get over that shit from Kobe, the game is going to be nothing, you know, because he right. wants to have that mental mindset and, like, to know that he can count on you in game seven. Yeah. You know, like, he wants dogs around him, you know what I mean? So to be able to see, like... Where he got it from. Where, where I mean, it was, yeah, obviously like he, he, had, owed it, he right, had it. Right. He had his he own had, version of that, right, but to right. see how he was influenced. The same, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to me, it gave me chills when I was watching that shit, when I'm just like, damn, my, my dog was just like that. Like, he would you know, he would go, he would bust people's ass in practice, always want to win everything, be on you, fight you if you're not with it. And uh, it, it, was, it was beautiful to see, man, Do because, you, like, People haven't seen that side of Kobe in practice. Yeah. You know what I mean? So one day that shit will be shown, but to be there firsthand and be in the middle of it and then, you know, know, know that he came and recruited like me and Ron Artest, like, I'm tired of playing against you motherfuckers. Like, come play with me. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? So we were kind of like, like they did um, Rodman yeah. on Bulls. Yeah. So we were like Kobe's like little pit bulls. You know what I mean? So it was it was a dope little vibe and it was a fun run when, 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 with those Lakers teams. I wanted to ask this. Do you think Kobe ever got high? I mean, you knew him personally. I always, I always wondered, like. I, I always <laughs> asked him to. And he, he said if we won a championship, he would smoke with me. So uh, I, he told, I, he told I, you. I promise you. I promise you. Wow. I was always Damn. on him. I was on him. I was on Steph Curry like that. Steph Curry owes me a smoke, actually. I haven't collected that, but Steph, I'm a, <laughs> you owe me a smoke because I told him. <laughs> I was like, like bro, if we win, would you smoke? And he 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 uh, he shook his head. So yeah, Steph Curry owes me a smoke. Um, Kobe, uh, I don't know. I, 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 he, I he never spoke if, with me. If he did it, he did it low right, key. Right, so, or, or it could have been some edibles, or you yeah. know what I mean? Because everybody yeah. dabbles and tries shit here and there. But as far as just smoking, uh, he and I never got to smoke together. But I was definitely looking forward to that uh, to that session. But if it happened, it, it's gonna happen in heaven though one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah I, you know, I, I thought. Uh, the way that uh, the way that uh, you know Mike spoke about him, you know, during his whole shit, and then you you see sort of like it even sort of started. There was one that started that where they like I'm gonna see you coming coming back or some shit mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. where they they it was either the All Star game or they were playing against each other, and uh, you you see the connection right yeah. there. Well, it was dope because uh, you know we. Summer saying Kobe's last interview, we did it on our podcast, and I asked him about MJ and the back and forth and all that kind of stuff, and it was, it was interesting to hear his take on it. But then when Mike spoke, it was Mike's take. You know, Mike yeah. looked at him as like a little annoying brother. Yeah, you know, what I mean, call him all times of the hour, asking him all times the questions. But then when I, you know, when <laughs> when, when I when I asked Kobe, you know, what Mike, uh, Mike, that motherfucker wants to bet on everything, and he wants to be the best at everything. And Kobe's like, I'm only going to bet on stuff I'm good at. 
You know what I mean? And then I asked Kobe, like, who would have won? You know, you're, you're, you you and Shaq versus him. And MJ, MJ said, oh, we would have. We would have whooped your guys' ass, and Cove's like, nah, like, remember who you're talking to. You know what I mean? So it's just like, to understand, like, to me, those are the two. I love Braun, and I think yeah. Braun is right in that mix, but for me personally, it's MJ and Cove. So to, to, to know how they their dynamic yeah. was, you know what I mean? And to hear it from Mike finally, because Mike, like I said, Mike never really spoke up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So to hear that and feel his passion, man, I, I, I think he, it, it was amazing. <laughs> and, and I hope that, uh, you know, because Kobe was someone who was kind of, opened up himself towards the end of his career and really yeah. started giving back and doing more stuff and being more out and vocal. I'm hoping maybe, you know, through Kobe's death, that's what happens with Mike, you know, because you're hearing Mike speak up more and more now yeah, and, yeah. and donating $100, $100 million and doing all kinds of shit now. So I hope that that kind of, like, got Mike out of his shell because we need Mike, we need people yeah. like Mike to speak. You yeah. know I mean, Mike is a legend and hero to all of us. He definitely needs to speak yeah. up. Yeah, man. And uh, I think they, you know, they just passed something with aviation with with helicopters. Now they have to fly with certain equipment. That's good. Do you know? Do to all that. And Vanessa Bryant was. Yeah, I saw her. Yeah, I yeah. saw her tweet. I, I I didn't know. I, I on the way here, or excuse me, right before I left, I looked on Instagram and I saw that she wanted a bill passed in, yeah. in, in Kobe and Gigi's honor. So I, I definitely hope. Uh, that they get that like yeah. like equipment to what like a parachute to jump out or something no no I just oh, think all kinds of <laughs> no like, cause I'm just I'm wondering I was like you said no, something. it's 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 detect <laughs> it, it's a detection system so like if they're flying close to a mountain or hills or something like oh, that because that's wow. that you know the uh, that helicopter wasn't equipped with that apparently mm, and they're yeah. going to make it that they all have that detection yeah. system yeah, so it's absolutely. like an upgrade to like the safety features for the safety of yeah, everybody okay. on Damn, fucking dope. flight you gotta know? be absolutely yeah uh, safe with that yeah man hmm. rest in peace to Cole, gg and everyone else uh, you know, we yeah. lost absolutely. yeah man praying for, praying, for, praying for vanessa and the girls man it's she's got she's she's so strong right now she made a request the other day and i hope people can kind of respect it was she just wished that people would stop making fan pages yeah because they her and you know the oldest daughter are seeing them so much and i understand the fan point of view but i hope that the fans understand like their requests you know obviously yeah. we want to mourn for them and, and we miss them but imagine how a mother feels that just lost her husband and her daughter. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I we can't begin to think what that feels like. So, I hope the Instagram can social me uh, social media community can respect their wishes. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's just motherfuckers that are opportunists out there, though. Yeah, you know, they wanna yeah. they wanna ride off of that shit yeah. and gain as many followers that they can on the platform. Right. And and some of her, some are doing it to be sincere. Right. For sure, we know that, you know, because mm -hmm. there's people that love Kobe, you know what yes. I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I it's... call the motherfuckers out that don't, though. Like, there are yeah. some people, there's some, because, you know, I, I've transitioned into media, and, uh, you know, from a player standpoint, the media has kind of always been like the cops, so to speak. Like, you don't really talk to me. If you've talked to me, you don't give them all of it. You yeah. know what I mean? So, but there are a handful of people that I, that, that as players, we respected that we would open up a little more to. So now that I've crossed over in media, like, you see people who blatantly just hate on people for no reason i'm just like how can like you're sitting behind that like jason <laughs> jason whitlock is one person that i've kind of personally like he used to talk so bad about kobe so yeah. bad about kobe and then when kobe died he caught himself trying to like have a moment and and, and force a fake tear out and and really yeah. just try to flip the script you know what i mean and i'm just like nah not you bro yeah. you gotta you know because Kobe was a superstar and loved by a lot, but a lot of people didn't fuck with Kobe. Yeah. You know what I mean? And for whatever reason it was, like, he was a superstar. There was kind of like, you know, most all superstars love, but Kobe, now, no, don't get me wrong. Kobe had a lot of love, a lot of love, but there's a lot of people that, that you know, that, that talk bad about Kobe. So to, to when when he died and you just start seeing all these people, like you said, they're just opportunists taking yeah. advantage mm -hmm. of the moment. Like, I in media, I wasn't having it. You know what I mean? Like, nah, stay, you know, stay where the fuck you started at. You know, yeah, don't try no, to cross over now that yeah. he died. Keep yeah. that same energy. Straight up. <laughs> straight up. Yeah. Like you made a point. Like, this man made a point to just disrespect Kobe Bryant. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, now he's passing and you're working on, you know, working on Fox and doing all this shit. And you're trying to fake a tear. Like, nah, we're not having that shit, bro. Fuck Crocodile that. tears. Fuck that. Yeah. I have none of it. 
Uh, you know, I'm glad you called him out on that shit because there's plenty of motherfuckers that did that. All the that. time. It, it, it's unfortunate, man. It, it's really when unfortunate. When you catch them, you got to call them. Right. And it's just like to the media, it, media is nasty. You know, yeah. we were talking about it like, you know, we're just followed all the time. But it's not so much about being right now. It's about being first and not worrying about the damage they cause right. when they're wrong. And when they're wrong, it's a little smidget at the bottom. But when it's in the minute, it's a big ass picture or whatever. You know what I mean? So it's just it's fucked up because... You know, it just doesn't have to be that way. You know what I mean? You, like, you can disagree or dislike someone without completely disrespecting them as a person. That's yes. the thing. You know what I mean? Like, I can, I, you can, your job is to critique. You can critique, but don't disrespect them as a man. Like, because you got to think, like, your fat ass was, you're doing this because you couldn't do what we were doing. You weren't good enough. You right. know what I mean? You weren't good enough to play in the NBA or the NFL, which you, the sport you played. So now, you know, your job is to critique. And I respect that. You got to do yeah. your job, but you don't have to disrespect people. It, yeah, exactly. Because <clears throat> that's not the job. Right. That's not. It's not the job. That's not the job. Leave your personal shit right. at home for however you feel about these players because you're resentful. Right. Because you couldn't be one of them. Right. That's all it is for the most part, too. If you look around sports, and I wish fans would be more hip to this, but they think it's cool because they like disrespecting players, too. You see people just people are too busy hating instead of just appreciating how great LeBron is, how great KD is, Steph. Yeah. People yeah. would rather hate instead of just realizing, like, I appreciate Like, you guys motherfuckers don't realize you're watching some of the greatest to ever do it, and you're just constantly hating on them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just that. I mean, that's another part of just hate, but I forgot where I was going with that. But, but, but I'll tell you what, <laughs> hey, listen, you know, if, if they hate you, you're doing something, something right. right. Something Absolutely. right. Absolutely. You got to be doing something right to make them hate you. Because always, you know, my, my, you know, what's always been told to me, like, through motherfuckers that, that, uh, that uh, like to be strategic about shit, right? It's mm -hmm. like, hey, listen, you don't want them thinking, uh, about you. You know, like, eh, whatever. It doesn't, whatever, that shit ain't nothing. Yeah, if they me. love you or hate you or a combination of both, there it is right there. Hate, hate is a combination of both. Yeah. Hate is a combination of dislike and love. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because if you didn't give a shit, you wouldn't say nothing. So there's something that yeah. you're drawn to that person oh, for yeah. that you probably like, but you're like, fuck it, I'm just bitter, so I'm going to hate on them. Hey, listen, I'll tell you. There was, there's <laughs> you there's, mean, there's, 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 there's yeah. a, a, a guy named Tom Likas. I'm sure everybody has... Um, familiar oh, yeah. with this name you know that's the type of relationship I think he had with some of some of the people that would listen to him it was a love hate thing right. you know they loved there was people that loved him and then people that hated him so much but they had to listen to what he said so they can call and tell him right. how wrong he is, right. he is their side of like the story that. yeah well, and no matter what your his name is in your mouth though and, and it's the you same and it's the same going the other way like right. if you know the, if if everybody is agreeing with you yeah you know what you're fucking right blah 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 there's always going to be somebody right. coming along and be like you know what fuck that you're wrong and da da da, -da, -da oh, right and nah. you got something right there but when you're when you're talking some shit that nobody's giving two fucks about, they're like, ah, whatever. Let me just right tune out. Straight up. And that's what today is, really, <laughs> man. It's it's oh, yeah. you know it shit is built off of that right now, man. With the media, with the news. I mean, you know, oh, yeah. you got fucking media that goes against each other. They're not even get really giving a fuck about <laughs> the news. It's all like propaganda on. I mean, between Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, someone always has a problem with one of those. Oh, yeah. you watch, you're a sheep. You watch CNN yeah. and MSNBC. Sheeple. And then I, I, I'd watch Fox News because I'm just starting to get into this shit probably the last couple years. And then I watch Fox News and I'm just like, and then I'll go look up what happened. I'm just like, well, damn, they're like censored. Like they're 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 altering. Like Trump did some shit just the other or just last night where he made it like a, a little racist white baby was chasing the yeah, black kid. Yeah, I saw that. And he edited it, and then everyone in the world had seen the one before though. Like they ran together and hugged, and yeah. then they like started chasing each other. But Trump edited it, so he's like, you know, I think I don't even know what the title was, but it was to the effect of like racist <laughs> white baby chasing the black. You know, what I'm yeah. just like, come on, bro, like you're. The president, dude. Like, what? The, what is this clownery you're doing? It's, it's he crazy. posted his meme. 
Yeah, he posted. It, he was serious. I don't know if it's still up. Someone look it up. I, he, but he, he was, was saying crazy. He edited this shit, but uh, social media called him on it, and now it's all over all the news. Like, but he's like really <laughs> editing video. <laughs> like, the shit is insane. Yeah. yeah, whoever whoever did that for him, insane. Uh, they, 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 they got to they slap themselves. They got to slap themselves. Slap themselves. Uh, maybe he, hey, he. Maybe he did it. Maybe he's he taking a shit in the bathroom and just making a meme, like and cutting it up and not knowing that everyone's gonna fact check everything you say. Uh, it was yeah. crazy, bro. Did you see that recent? Uh, he had a meeting with people about the COVID reaction mm -hmm. uh, as a country, and he's just on his phone swiping. Unbelievable! That shit was <laughs> that was fucking incredible to watch. Like he was just on his. They're like having these talking to the, about the issues at hand for the country, and yeah, he ain't even paying attention. But I I don't like him. But I look at him sometimes like that's a cold motherfucker because no one else can do the shit he does. <laughs> yeah, Could you imagine yeah. if Obama Man. did some shit like that? Oh, they'd be oh, like, they oh, yeah, oh, oh my god! Uh, hey, well, you know, hey, listen, any any like actual true politician couldn't do that because they're groomed a certain way. They're groomed yeah. to to react this way to 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 press. To in in the diplomacy and all that shit, right? They're they're groomed to be a certain way. He breaks all that protocol. You don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, and that's the one thing. Fuck. That's the one thing I respect about him that he just doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, he used the upside that. down um, KKK symbol, the triangle, the, the red yeah, triangle. Yeah. I, like yeah. I didn't even know about that, but then I looked it up, and I'm just like, this dude doesn't give a. And then he said something today, like. Uh, protesters coming to Oklahoma. This is not going to be like, and he named some other city. This is going to be very different for you here. Like he's like a dog. He blows that dog whistle to people who hate. It's yeah. awesome gangster shit. It's crazy. Yeah, his, he, his he runs I like don't, a crime boss. Yo, his <laughs> I don't give a fuck game is is top notch. Yeah, his, I, I, you don't. That top that's notch. where you got to ask. Like, is is he trying to compete with other world leaders who? you know, rule with the fucking iron fist. He's just the rich white dude that fucked around and back in the day said Republicans are dumb, you know what I mean, and ended up running Republican and winning, and that he's just, he's a rich white dude, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he got, he started his career with a million dollar loan from his father, you know what I mean? So he's just been in this game, and hey, let me see if I can be president. I'm a reality TV star, let me see if I can be president, and he won. Mm. But he he was smart, though. I think he's really smart. I, I think he knew the crowd he had to get. Just like yeah. Obama knew that he had, he that, that, that minorities, we finally felt like in record numbers we came out and voted because we felt like this guy kind of represents us. Yeah. So Trump was smart enough to know who he had to go after. You know, the the rednecks, the the the, the, the KKK, the undercover people, the, the 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 white trash. Like I have to speak to them. You know what yeah. I mean, I have to speak to them yeah. because he gave them hope. So they all came out in, in in number and voted for him. You know what I mean? So I think he's smart enough to know that. But he's just so far in the game now that it's just like you can't go back. It, 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 you can't. He you can't, can't go back. Votes. Keep you going, can't, man. You know, I, I was talking to Russell Simmons one day. Um, man, a couple of years ago, and he was just like, you know, I've known Donald for over thirty years. You know what I mean? And he's not the the, the guy. I know wasn't racist. You know, you think about yeah. it, like every, he was the most rapped about white dude ever. He's playing before to a, this. He's yeah. playing you know to I mean? a base. So, like you said, he exactly. He's playing whatever he has to play. So, like you said, now he's so far in. Now he can never come back. He can't come back. You know what I mean? But before he well, was in this, well, shit, he's in the seat. A little. He has. I'm sure he has a little bit of a rich, good old boy in him that he enjoys, kind of doing this shit but uh, i would say more than not it's not but he's too far in it now yeah you know what i mean so he can never too come deep. back too it's deep like shit i'm too all the deep. way in this fucking I, i'm shit. in it you know so I'm, I, I might as well get tatted as soon as i get out this office he might have you know what i mean so it's just like you know i don't know if that's a job i would ever want president yeah no no fuck because they really don't have power you know no. what I mean? It's a, it's it's you not know, real. It's, it's, not real. You know, everyone always wanted to complain about you know Obama didn't do this, Obama didn't do that. He got chopped at the legs he, every he time he tried to do anything. He ain't necessarily playing by the rules, but he ain't where the real power's at. No, it's you know Mitch McConnell's the most powerful person in the in the in the country. Man. You know what I mean? And in, in the Supreme Court and the Senate, and you know, this is all stuff I'm starting to learn, which is let, so fascinating. Let me ask you this: You think like senators like in that position, right? I mean, listen, the longest term that one president can hold if he gets reelected is, is two, you know, eight years, eight eight years, years. Mm -hmm. right? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's two terms, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Shouldn't there be a, a term limit for senators? I mean, th there should I, uh, be. I'm not sure what it is, but I don't no, think I mean, they have they to run, run and get reelected yeah, and everything. But I'm saying, you know, if you've ran a certain amount of times and I you've agree. been senator for maybe, you know, four 
years. Okay, mm-hmm. boom, your shit is done. Yeah. So you should have elevated yourself to to go higher, or you got to go find something else to do. Something, man. Fresh blood, but, but fresh I ideas. I think fresh blood, fresh ideas, because mm-hmm. I think that's the the problem is that they hold these motherfuckers. They recycle them. Yeah. yeah, they, yep. they yeah. recycle them. And, and, and I think it's a part of what you said too is that people, you know, that a lot of people don't think their vote fucking counts. But in your state. These are the things that you could fucking change, and if you don't, these people win by fucking default win, sometimes because yeah. nobody runs against them. I want to say we need like three or four more, and don't quote me, um, Democratic senators, you know, to kind of take over the House, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and that's serious. You know, people say, you know, Democrats are bad, Republicans are bad, and I think both sides do good and bad things. But one right. thing I've There's learned balance. Is yeah. I've been watching C SPAN lately, and just the other day on this police justice bill, you sit and watch, you can Google and look like all the points that this, this police justice bill is fighting for, you know, uh, taking away immunity, no knock warrants, no more chokeholds, it's unanimous on the Democrat side. Like they all want it. And then a majority of the Republicans just don't want it. Yeah. And it's crazy. Like, if you just look at it from that standpoint, like, they're okay with the racist policing that has plagued our country for how long? You know what I mean? Like I said, so you could say both sides are bad. And, I, you know, both sides have a lot of work to do. But when you just look at the just the straight facts, like, they don't want, they want cops to still be able to to do the no shit knock warrants. Yeah. They want cops to still be able to keep pe- people in chokeholds. They want cops to still be, and it's just when you look at it from that point of view, it's just like that's crazy. It, it you know what crazy. I mean? It's so it's just up. hard. So it's just that's why we have to start watching and paying attention more and learning this shit because we have the power to get people in positions to get that kind of shit out of here. Right. So because me too. it's it's really the people, like in the Congress and the Senate, right? Yeah. yeah. They, they, they're either going to back the president's moves or they're not going to back. So when they see, you know, somebody who's going to ride their line, they're going to protect them. Yeah. Yes. And that's but th- instead of thinking about the country, they're thinking about their agenda. Yes. I think and I think because Trump had that, to be, but I think he's starting to wear some of even those kind of people like wrong. You know yeah. what I mean? Just yeah. the shit he like the people that have been riding for this dude. They're just like. It's like, hold on, when when does the circus stop? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's just (laughs) just so crazy that he's losing them. He just takes it to another fucking level. He's like, oh, fuck. They said like a... What now? Shit. They said 102 eligible Americans didn't vote this last term because they just felt like it was a lesser of two evils, Trump and Hillary, whatever. So if we get (laughs) the turnout, and I'm not saying Biden is perfect by any means because he has a lot of work and his, his, his... past doesn't speak to it but we have the power to get him in a position to just keep the seat warm for four years if, right. if that's the case you know what i mean and then hopefully there'll be some valuable candidates coming in 2024 but we trump is so far in that hate shit now that he can't come back so we yeah. have to get hate out of the white you know out of the white house first yeah. and foremost i don't care what he, the people's claim he's done for the unemployment and all that shit i don't care about any of that because Black and brown people are dying every day because of hate, and he is a dog whistleblower for hate. You know what I mean? So I don't give a fuck. Anything else you've done, it doesn't even register to me. What you donated to the black community and all that, that shit doesn't register because the same people that you're trying to donate to and just do enough to stay status quo are being killed, and you're okay. He hasn't spoke on Black Lives Matter yet. He it was he's hesitant to speak on. He don't want to say that. You know what I mean? He don't want to say that. He can't because he knows what his base is and how far he's gone. You know what I mean? So eat him up for that. To each his own. If that's where you've gone, that's where you've gone. I'm not even mad. I don't have enough energy to be mad at you, but just like we got to get him out. Keep it moving, man. That's it. Yeah. That's, That's time. It. <laughs> That'd be a godsend to him. He get him out of the fire. And then go quick. back to business and do your thing, man. You know what I mean? Like I'm, yeah. I, I'm not mad. Like you, 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 ju- you broke all. You defined all odds. You became the president. Like you won at the end of the day. That's it's it's you, definitely on the history books. Come on, for man. Sure. You won. Yeah. I'm not even mad at your hustle, man. But just, just you're so far gone now. Like we need, just, we just need someone who doesn't isn't okay with hate. Yeah. That's just the way I look at it. Yeah. Politics and business side, I'm just talking about life, period. Yeah, yeah division is not... We're more divided now than we've ever been, and ever it's unfortunate. In life. Yeah, when when you think about that, when you divide the people, man, like, it it, it puts the country, un, you know, in an unbalanced situation, right? And that leaves it open for, you know, us to tank on a lot of fucking levels, 
are well, standing in the world. You know what I'm saying? All yeah, that right, exactly. You know what I mean? Like Trump is quick to always kind of criticize these governors and mayors. Like, yeah, the, the, the country is laughing at you. Like, no, the world is laughing at you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Absolutely. the world is laughing at us. Like we keep fucking up. We're all getting laughed at. Come on, man. Like it's not, <laughs> and it's all of us. You know, and most of us are about our shit, but we got this dude leading us that's, that's not really about it. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's just... You had you had your fun your four years you defined all odd you became president congratulations like let, let, let's move on to who's next and like I said it may not even be Biden but he, right now he's our only choice yeah you know what I mean he's our only choice and and the way we play this is once we realized how powerful we are as voting Biden knows that he's going to have to uh, attune to us because we're going to have the power to give him a second term you know what I mean so he has to come in and people are saying like well he has to you know he has to we can't just give our vote away and I respect that and I agree with that but at the same time if we we just got to get hate out. So if we get Biden in and then he really starts listening to us, knowing the power we have, I have a feeling we're going to come out in record number um, in November and vote. So once we realize that when we come out and vote, it makes a difference, like we're never going to give that power away. So Biden is going to understand how much power this minority culture holds. So he's going to have to attune to us. And if he doesn't, we'll get him out and the next person will come in. That's how we kind of have to look at this game. Yeah, man. People got to know, mm -hmm. you know, they, they got to come out. And, and make their voices be heard. Got to vote. Straight up, man. You got to vote. I mean, it's, if you it's don't. It's for our kids, man. It's for our kids. If you man, don't, like, you, you know, how can you really say anything? Yeah. I mean, right. you could be mad as fuck for sure, but. But you can't really be out here talking shit, especially if you're not doing nothing. If you're not, like, the, the, the simplest thing you can do is vote. Like, some, a lot of people are marching. A lot of people are doing their thing. But if you haven't even voted, it's just like. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's, you know, that's. I, you know, back in. in when I was younger, I used to call myself doing that shit too. You know, I like, just, I don't want to sound like I'm better than anyone. I just started voting yeah. with Obama, so I'm not even yeah. going to lie to you. I, I mean, I used to do that shit too. Like, you know, you fuck this and fuck that. Are you voting? Nah. Well, then you can't say, what, what the fuck you mean? Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> you know, but if you, I, I feel like if you pay taxes, yeah, you obviously you're going to fucking want to say something but realistically man you know you really can't say anything because you what your voice is through your your right. vote and i i think before we used to give people pass I, I i never used to have a problem with people feel like they didn't want to vote because i understood you know what i mean yeah. like and I, I used to be one of them but, but now it's not because you're seeing this shit in front of your eyes like it's our job to get out and educate ourselves and vote because it's not about us we're going to start the change that our children and our grandchildren are going to see you know and hopefully yeah. we come into a place in, in 30 years where like everyone is mixed and there's no hate i'll say this though you know a lot of people don't vote because they don't feel it counts right especially yeah. due to right. the, the electoral college mm -hmm. you know uh thievery that happens <laughs> every now and then yeah. you know what i'm saying every, it's every happened time. twice we've seen it we've seen it happen Preach. twice Preach. and uh you know so people feel like you know why should i go vote when it's going to be taken from me by this right you know but now we got a lot so so, so we're bringing real attention to that now and, and the brawn has started a, a, a voter suppression uh you know kind of team you know what i mean so we're gonna have eyes we're gonna we're gonna send djs out to these voting places so we're gonna have DJ, we're gonna make this shit fun you yeah. know what i mean like we gotta bring our culture and our people and fuck everybody out because like i said at the end of the day it's everybody versus racism it's yeah. not no more black brown white color it's just everybody versus hate and every there's people yeah. who hate in every race. So whoever is with is it's not truth. just not white people hate. There's black people hate, Mexican people hate, yeah. Asians that hate. It's everybody who loves versus hate. It's that's how, the that's real how, disease. Straight up, man. That's the, the biggest up. disease right there. It's hate. Hate. Hate has been here since the beginning, and, and we're worried about COVID, and I respect that, and we're worried about everything else, but we still don't want to address that hate is what this country was built on. Well, you know, police started as slave wranglers. So how could something was started as slave wranglers ever be something that you could really yep. legitimately trust the badge is the same the same from back in the day till now it's, it's a little star it's yeah. crazy you know what i mean like think about this george floyd situation for a second obviously rest in peace we saw the videotape of this shit yeah and they still tried to lie to us yeah blatant they still tried to he resisted he did this you didn't see before that and then we got the before finish <laughs> there so was no and then we found out you're whooping his ass in the car so we saw everything and they still tried to lie to us think about all the times that we had to take the police officer's word their cameras were off or before cameras think about all the times it was just the cop's word 
Yeah. And we keep seeing them lie in every single situation right now. Yeah. Yeah, like how many Rodney Kings did they have before they actually filmed? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Enough. Enough. You know what to, I mean? Yeah. And, and all these, you know, these cops that are killing people who are asleep. You know, the, the last guy ran. and, and But the one before, there was one in the bay that just, they just shot his car up. Dude was asleep. You know what I mean? So it's just yeah. like you've had to just take these police officers' word. And it's just like, damn, like yeah. it really open he, people that didn't want to believe race was involved it really started to open their eyes up they're just like man okay, yeah, like, this, what? Shit, this shit keeps happening you know what I mean and, and now there's video and the craziest thing about it is these cops are still doing it even though they know they're being filmed because yeah. they say 1% of officers who kill civilians are charged and less than less than 1% are convicted so they're 9.5 9.8 times you're, li- you're getting away with it yeah that's fucking people. Are, the, the the one of the cops that killed Breonna Taylor was fired today. So yeah, we can I saw keep, that. so we can kill someone. Like we can go outside and shoot someone and just get fired from our from our podcast and and and, and you, <laughs> yeah. Be, you can go kill someone. Arrest you, them. you just can't rap no more. Just go home. They gotta arrest him. He can't. You know what I mean? Like they shouldn't wait. See, that's what gets me. It's like you fired him. He should go into custody right when you fire him. Why are you letting him go home and Crazy. waiting for him to turn Crazy. himself in? Crazy. Yeah, what code you know, is that? I what, guess. What you know code what I mean? is that? But it's, you know what it is? It, it's these police unions. You know, what yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. working on some and some stuff in Sacramento with some policies. Uh, I was a part of this bill, uh, AB 392, <clears throat> that was passed and, and went into effect at the beginning of this year. And it's a police procedure bill where they have to exhaust all other trained tactical uh, options before they administer deadly force. So you got to do all the de-escalate shit before you kill somebody. So that just went into. But obviously, that's not strong enough. Um, but the one thing that, you know, I, I, from a concept that I'm hearing is the two strongest unions are the teachers union and the police union. That's why kids don't learn anything and police do what they want. The unions are very, very powerful. You know what I mean? Mm. People are, you know, you see cops fired and you see, a you know, a, a someone, one of the head police officers in Florida saying everyone who's fired come down to Florida and it's different down here and you can still work here. And it's just like, yeah, what the that. fuck? Damn. That shit is crazy. Like you're recruiting hate. Yeah, different it's down here. Ins- it's right, crazy. it's insane, man. It's it, it, it's scary. It's unfortunate, man, because like we can't help what motherfucking color we are. Like I have to try to explain to you know biracial children. My kids are Italian, Mexican, and black. Like that, people are gonna dislike them just because of the color of their skin. Like that's fucking why. Yeah, it's sick, man. Always. You know what I mean? So it's just like everyone just live and everybody be happy, man, because we're not here for a long time. You know, just. Try to nothing's perfect, but just try to be a good person, man. Just fuck all this hate. Yeah. It's just that's that's yeah, my main rage. thing, man. One hundred. That's my main thing. Take away the hate. Man, I appreciate you letting me come get high with you today, man. I've had all three of my boys all week, plus my fifteen year old nephew, like <laughs> while I'm fucking <laughs> taking Zoom calls and chasing this little motherfucker around the house and he had an explosive <laughs> diaper this morning as oh, I was on a call. Like <laughs> So I got to come over here and get high today, man. I appreciate that. Man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey man, we do what we can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I appreciate when, that. When, when we can, through <laughs> that. Hey, we got to get on that shit, man. That, that me and you and Snoop talked about, and I'm uh, doing the hot box, the video, get the, the card game with you guys too. Yeah, yeah. We're on that shit now. I got to talk. We'll talk oh, about that. That's there. right. Yeah. That's just gonna be hard, but we got to do that. That that movie theater shit. Me and you and Snoop are we talking. We should about. do it. Got to. Oh man, it's gonna kill. That the would game. win. We can't yeah. tell y'all. No, we can't tell you yet. This shit's gonna be cold. <laughs> Blood it. Let's get this COVID the fuck out of here so we can get back to normal life, get hate out of here, and let's let's be happy, man. Everybody smoke weed. Yeah, man. yeah, I you mean, go. you know, listen, every that knocked down so many 420 events yeah. and celebrations oh. across the world. I mean, sharing a joint, you'll learn so much about anybody. You know what I mean? Right. Like breaking, you know, burning one with somebody, you'll mother. Yeah. It, I bet you if, 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 if we smoked a joint with Donald Trump, we might end up fucking with him because we just kind of understand him and he'd understand us. You he know might what I mean? You, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> man, stop acting like a clown. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. but we can burn one and kind of have that conversation, but weed is like the, the gatekeeper to peace a i think it's going to change like the culture a little bit i think you know people will smoke together but i think it'll be more rasta like where they'll smoke their own oh yeah like nip said ain't no puff and pass please yeah, you're going to do the same like there's no the not one, anymore. you're not going to get to that but that was dope being yeah. able to just pass it around the circle how it yeah. used to be because that was kind of like some real fellowship and I, I, but I, now I, you just got to smoke and I'm not I'm, I'm not mad at, I always smoke my own joint so I'm not mad at that I don't have nah, to pass you know, no more I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I think what will happen is like oh 
I got my jar right here. Here, roll some of this up. Yeah, right. yeah that's it. Start sharing it. flavors. Or you yeah, carry, sharing flavors. Start sharing like flavors. Or you carry more, like rolled, like you carry a box or something. Yeah. Oh, I always I keep pre rolls in my car in, in, yeah, inside the little because the, the little Mercedes got the little fake freezer refrigerator in there, so I just keep them bitches in there in in the little package. So I keep nice. them with me wherever I roll. Yeah, I just don't <laughs> see you know at this point. Like, I mean, you don't share cigarettes and you don't share cigars. You don't share beers. You don't share a beer. It's right. Unless, I mean, you pour somebody. It's just going to get people's tolerances up, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're going to find out, can you really smoke? I mean, you that mean? was... You got to smoke your own I shit. Mean, yeah. I mean, look, we were doing that in the smoke box beforehand, you know? Yeah. But, I mean, when this all popped off, we stopped sharing joints with each yeah, other, even right. though we know, hey, listen. Yeah. We right, really we're good. Yeah, but, there, no, but, but there's something about that, though. There is something yeah. about the act of it, the, right. like, actual, like, you know, just, like, The energy, the vibe. And energy yeah. and all that, yes. Right. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Now we're just I'm one like, loud room. My my kid my kids aren't gonna get to experience that. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it, I mean, I think you could still do that with family, like people that you really, really, yeah, really know. Yeah, yeah, like, that's I'm talking, been, yeah, but I'm talking about the homies. You the know homies, what I mean? Yeah, they're oh, yeah. not gonna get to get. It's that. weird though, because I mean, obviously, I don't encourage them. They're only 11 to do, but we have open conversations. You know what I mean? Like I'm a dad that attacks stuff. I grew up in a household full of drugs. My dad was a drug dealer. I seen shit jump off right in front of me when I was little. So I've always been very open um, with my kids. So when the when the, the twins are 11 now, when they were eight, I put them to bed one time and they see me smoking down by the pool and the next morning they came down and i guess in school they just happened to be working on like <laughs> what cigarettes do to your lungs so oh, uh yeah. they came to me the next morning they're like dad we saw you smoking it last night and i was like oh shit they're like what were you, were you smoking a cigarette you know what cigarettes make your lungs black and i'm just like damn i gotta tell them the truth like, what do i say i'm just like nah <laughs> i was like daddy was smoking a joint and they're like well, what's a joint and i'm just like well you know how daddy's knees backs and ankles hurt because i play basketball Instead of drinking alcohol or taking a pill, I smoke a joint and it helps the pain go away and I can sleep. And they're like, oh, okay. And then one of my twins is like, well, you know, I hurt my ankle a lot. When can I start smoking? I was like, oh, shit. Wow. So then I'm like, <laughs> so then I'm like, oh, man, you got to be older. He's like, so when I'm 30, I can smoke? I'm like, yeah, when it's you're 30, you could smoke. So. It's adult medicine. So then, so then, just maybe two weeks ago. So you know, kids are all they do now is play with their friends on their iPads. So you can, they're just saying whatever. And um, one of my boys said, "You must be high." To one of his friends. So when they got, I didn't make a big deal, but when they were done playing, um, we were downstairs. I'm like, "What do you know about being high?" And they're like, <laughs> no, and then they're just like, "What do you mean?" I'm just like, "I heard you tell your friend you must be high. What do you know about being high?" And they're just like, "Nothing." I was just like, "Okay," um, and they're just like, "Well, you understand, like, you know that, you know, that's what happens." And they say, "From what happens from weed?" And like, "Yeah, we know." I'm just like, "Well, okay." Just like you know, if we ever get to a point where you guys feel like you want to try, just know you can come talk to me, and we'll talk to your mom, and we'll figure it out. Okay, you don't have to. You know, sneak it around or high. So I want to be very. So although I don't smoke in front of them, like I said, I want to be able to keep that open line of communication. Yeah. And if it comes, I want to be able to teach them not only about smoke but just life in general. Right. You know what I mean? Because so they don't who, go somewhere else. Who fucking knows what they're getting off the internet these days? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm them to like I fuck around now with sex. They're 11. One has a girlfriend. I kind of poke around and it's kind of. Eh, but now they're starting to understand it a little more. So it's starting to become like a smooth. It's going to be a conversation pretty soon. But yeah. I don't want my kids learning nothing else from no. You know what I mean? Unless it's something good. Right. I don't want them learning how to be men from you know what I mean I'm gonna teach you how to be a man so I'm gonna jump ahead of it before it comes to us right yeah. and just know I didn't done everything so you're not gonna pull nothing past me <laughs> Isaiah and Carter who are 11 and Ashton you're 18 months I'm gonna be on your ass too boy so you're not getting nothing past your dad <laughs> cause Papa's worldly mm, come on yes. man I didn't I didn't been I was born in it you know what I mean like I said I, yeah. I you know my dad was a drug dealer my parents were functioning drug addicts so I grew up watching as soon as I can remember seeing motherfuckers hit lines of cocaine this big so it's just like i was raised in it and i yeah. feel like me my brother and sister like i some friends went that way me and my brother and sister went to weed and we didn't fuck with everything else you know what i mean so it was just being raised and i was forced to be like a, a understandable and more knowledgeable at a young age and that's just what it was so i didn't see a lot of shit yeah some kids gotta grow up faster because mm -hmm. of their situation <sighs> yeah you know yeah. And, and you process things different and then when you grow up and you have your own kids, yeah, you definitely you got to are more open and 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 teaching them shit. You have to rather than sheltering, 
Because right. a lot of parents like to shelter. They don't want to teach their kids. Straight. That's the key. And, and, and you know, they grow up without a clue of, of what real shit is. So when they get free, they go crazy. Oh, yeah. That's how that. So I went to, to them, uh, predominantly. The one thing about my parents was that they always put me in white schools. Like they wanted me to stay out of trouble and focus on sports. So I went to school with rich white kids, but. I mean, they had to sneak everything. And then by the time they were, like, free to kind of do whatever, like, the only rule when I was younger was you just had to check in. You always had to check in twice. You know what I mean? Just to let them know where you're at and you're good. But these kids couldn't do shit. So, like, once they got a chance to be free, man, they started fucking sneaking cocaine, stealing their parents' pills. And I was just watching these kids like, yeah. The wild ones. But like I said, I didn't sing this, so I, I wasn't judging them. I wasn't, you know, I was going to smoke my weed. You do you. If you want to know how I feel about it, I'll tell you. But I'm not going to just, you're high, do you. You know, I, I had several friends in high school that were super dope for baseball and got fucked up with coke and pills and just never made it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was never someone who preached on them. But I'm just like, you know, I don't fuck with this shit. You know what I'm on, and this is where I'm trying to go. She's stuck with the weed. Come on, man. That's it. <sighs> That's all you need. <laughs> That's all you need. Is the all, all you need. need. That's all you need. That's all you Forever need. and ever. Straight yeah, up. Man. That's the good medicine. Straight up. That's the good medicine. Hey, Amen. I want to thank you for taking the time. No doubt, man. Chop it up with us thank over you here on me. the Green Thumb Podcast. This is a good conversation, man. People are going to like this one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, it's real shit. And and people are tired of the bullshit. They, they want to hear what's really going on. And that's why we st- we stick out like sore thumbs because there's so much sugarcoating. You know what I mean? So when you oh. have some real shit to say, you'll be able to be successful in any walk of media. <clears throat> you know, anybody can start a podcast. You got some real shit to say. People are going to fuck with you. That's right. <coughs> Word up, man. Let them know where they can find you. Man, Matt underscore Barnes 9 on Instagram. Uh, Matt underscore Barnes 22. Twitter. And then All The Smoke Podcast. Uh check us out that's a fitting name man Mm because y'all two um we real smokers (laughs) no no and and we're with the the court and we're with the shit and on the court y'all was with the shit which you know and i meant to bring up earlier and i'll just say it quickly like the league is different now they don't have y'all no like the guys we were the last of the dying breed like i was the last like one of the last like myself and zach randolph Kenyon Martin, Stephen Jackson, we all kind of went out within like a two or three year period, and it's just a different game now. What you what you saw in the last dance in like John that's who we Selly learned from, and, and, that's who and we learned Rodman from. and those guys. That's who we learned from. You guys were the last of that class, yep. right there. Yeah, and I meant up. to say that right quick. Yeah, yeah. no, that was it was. I, I, but you got to respect. I mean, although I don't, I don't like it. I wish you could be more physical and play more defense. At the end of the day, you don't want to see a boring ass 82-87 game. Like, right. You want to see Steph hit motherfucking fifteen threes. They score points. Hey, and you want to see LeBron Duncan and AD. Like you want to see highlights. You don't yeah. want to see. So I understand. Like people have to understand. Like that. The, the pierce of the game, like, I wish there was more defense. I'm a defensive player, but I get what they're doing. You know what I mean? They're, they're like, it's the NBA is global now. You yeah. know what I mean? They're growing the game because it's, it's got to be exciting. highlights. It's yeah. got to be highlights. So exciting, yeah. But it's definitely different. Yeah, like I said, we were the last of kind of that era. And that's who we, we I, you know, I learned from, you know, the, the, Dennis, the young Dennis Rodman in Detroit and, 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 and the Worthies and Magic with the Lakers and watching Boston and uh, watching Mike's upbringing. Like, that's how I learned. And on top of that, I was a football player. Yeah. So, like, I wish I could have played back then. I wish I could have played, like, in the 80s. I would have fucking loved it. It would have been <laughs> such a challenge. I would have loved it, though. Because that's, like, how I ended up playing. So, like I said, it, it softened through my career. And it got to the point, like, you know, at the end where you couldn't do shit. So, it was, you know, it was time my, my time to go anyway. But it's it's way different now. But yeah. I, I mean, I still love it though. I still love it too, man. Right. There's some good good shit going on this yeah. this season. You know, good stuff was happening before all this yeah. shit. Word up! How about you, C minus? Any uh, shout outs for you? Yeah, this uh, everyone follow me, uh, C minus fan four on Instagram, uh, Twitter, and Twitch, and what else? Mixcloud too. Yeah, the DJ and putting up more mixes and stuff. So yeah, thank you, everyone. Make sure you guys go check out the new High and Hungry. It's a new episode out there. It's doing great. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot about What's that. What's that? What's that? It's uh, my food show. We go, we get high, and then we get hungry. Bro, how have yeah. I fucking been on your show yet then, dude? Like, you oh, know, there it is. There bro. it is. Wow. We just put it together. We just put it together oh, right man, there. Man, I'm on. I'm on. I'm on the next episode. Oh, man. On. Yeah, you got to go. Let's do it. With, with I real had his some... best burger at the last spot. Yeah, he was in the last yes. episode. So. I did. You got to oh. come with us You got to come with us again. I'll go. Let's go do it. All right. I'll with you. Hey, next week, I don't have my kids. I'm I'm free this upcoming week, so let's do it next week. We'll set up. You heard it here. So we got an upcoming high and hungry as well. And, uh. For all the merch and stuff, go to highandhungry.shop.
So. Yes. Word up. Thank you for watching. Make sure you um, stay safe. Remove hate man, get from hate your, your, your mind and vote. Um, vote. We're going to teach you how to vote. Word up, man. And uh, be good to one another out there. You know what I'm saying? And stay blazing. Stay blazing. Dr. Green, them out.